What's up guys, my name is Eric Cattell. I am back for year two. I did win How to Hero of the Year last year, but I'm back again, but this time with a whole new build. And for those who might not know, um, the car that won last year, uh, it no longer exists because I might have uh, crashed it. <laughs> The hatch that I had last year, um, we were competing for the championship up to the very last race of the season. So me and Jeremy Swenson were battling pretty much the entire season. It came down to the last race at Road America, which was the finale of the season. Um, unfortunately, it was kind of raining. Um, things were a little bit hectic. There was an invert on the field. I started further back. I dropped a few places and I was trying to keep up with Jeremy and then we're going into the kink on the, basically the first lap and there was a, almost a stack up occurring in front of me. Um, a few cars kind of got together, one car went off, and I made a split second decision to kind of go for a gap. Unfortunately, that gap was about three fourths of a car's width. And basically what happened was I pitted myself, um, I hit a meal tab, and I spun, hit a concrete wall, and the whole front end of the EG was completely destroyed. Um, the frame was bent, the firewall was pushed in. That whole misfortune kind of spawned this crazy build. I've always wanted to build a car like this and I guess I finally had a reason to do it. The goal with this build was to build a car that could be competitive in GLTC, but be heavily inspired by the JTCC race cars, like 90 to 95. Step one was to kind of fit a big wheel and tire on the car. So right now I'm currently running a 17, but in order to make it work, I had to cut every arch out of the car and basically create um, custom fender wells out of uh, trailer fenders. So it's, it's what you call tubbing, like a lot of drifters do it. So that opened up probably three to four inches of travel in the upward way, which allows the car to be a lot lower. Um, it also opened up the width so I can fit a wider tire in the front and not rub against the uh, like inner fender wells. But we went crazy on the cage because after the wreck with the hatch, I kind of realized the hatch wasn't the safest car. Like the way it buckled and like after, it didn't hit the wall that hard, but the whole chassis is like completely bent up. So I really wanted to reinforce every aspect of this build. And since I cut so much of the tubs out, I wanted to tie into the front shock towers, the rear shock towers, tie into as many points as I possibly could. So a lot of custom fab work on this build to make everything work. Most of what you see here is kind of carryover from the hatchback. We got the same K24 uh, JDM engine. It's a three lobe, um, pretty much all stock internals, um, minus the RSX oil pump and 50 degree BTC. Transmission is 0203 RSX Type S as well with an Oskaiken diff. Most of that stuff um, is basically the same from the hatch. We got the, the drive-by wire set up. So the cool thing about this engine setup, it's actually raised three fourths of an inch higher than what the hatch was. Um, and that's with the support of uh, Hasport. So we actually got custom mounts in this to, to raise the engine up because the whole chassis is lower and the oil pan sat pretty close to the ground on the hatch and I knew it was gonna be a problem here. We have the hybrid racing tensioner. We got the hybrid racing um, water neck on the bottom. We have the Y wire engine harness, which we needed to run the drive-by wire and that connects directly to the Haltech ECU, which was super nice, direct plug and play. I built this car, I didn't really mention it, but I built this car basically starting in January this year. So it was basically an eight, eight month build from scratch. I mean, this thing was a bare shell, stripped it to bare metal, all, all the fab work, building everything, custom parts, eight, eight months. And uh, yeah, to get it out this year, I was uh, really happy with myself and all the people supporting me, you know, you guys, Haltech, um, Hybrid Racing, and all the companies that were on board kind of really helped make this possible because it was a lot of work. It was basically a second full-time job and every weekend it was, 40 hours of work. And uh, now for me, it's the fun part of the build where it's kind of fine tuning it and kind of addressing the, the weaknesses of the car. And uh, I think I'll get there pretty soon. As you can see, I sit really far back in this car. So that was, uh, I guess I don't really know why we, well, the main goal was to kind of shift as much weight rearward as possible. Um, but by doing so, it kind of caused a lot of other <laughs> issues. Um, first of all, it was a great excuse for me to do a pedal box. So you can see we got a tilt-in A50 series pedal box. 
really nice unit. Um, we welded the whole frame to the kind of floor and, and side, so it's super stiff setup. And then uh, the second issue was getting the steering wheel further back. So uh, a good friend of mine, uh, Pat, made this custom steering column extender. And you can't really see the cage work, but the cage work underneath the dash is insane to give this enough stiffness because this whole column is extended about an extra foot. So it's an OEM column that I extended and braced like crazy because I did not want the wheel to kind of vibrate. And it is a manual power, non-power steering car. Um, and then, yeah, last but not least, we have the hybrid racing shifter, which is an absolutely phenomenal unit. But to get it further back, we had to not only extend the cables, but kind of run a custom mounting setup. So hybrid actually mocked up this huge, um, we call it like the, I call it the command station center. Um, so all of my accessories are mounted to this base and it actually lifts the shifter up. So the shifter is close to the wheel. Um, so we have the PDM button pad, we have tilt and bias, we have a prop valve, my kill switch, fire bottle pull, we got the radio. I have some extra plugs in there for power. So everything is kind of housed in that little unit um, because obviously I can't reach the dashboard anymore. So um, it's a really nice setup. I think it's kind of fun sitting this far back. Um, it's, it's unique when you're driving it and you have to kind of look out the back window. But um, it's a pretty cool driving feeling. You kind of feel the back end a little bit more and it does shift the weight back a little bit. Daryl on Instagram hit me up, he's from Florida, and he says, hey man, I got a sedan shell, um, it's got no motor in it, um, do you want it? And I, I kind of thought he was messing with me, but he was serious, he wanted to donate the car for me to build into this, so I was super grateful. Um, yeah, I mean, I drove, me, my dad, my friend DJ, we drove to Florida and in two days, there and back straight, picked up the car, um, and the car was in pretty good condition. Um, had to fix a few spots here and there, but it was a great canvas to start this with. And obviously, I mean, being free, donated a car, you know, it was, it was a perfect start. And it allowed me to kind of go crazy on this and not feel guilty cutting up a super clean chassis. Um, but yeah, it was a perfect car to start this build with. I'm currently, I think the main limitation at the moment is I'm running a stock front knuckle, but I clearanced the upper shock towers as much as I could to run as low as I possibly can with clearance of the upper control arm. Um, we have PCI, lower control arms, billet aluminum. And then of course we did a whole custom sway bar with the cage guy. We did a sway bar that runs through the engine bay and it's a NASCAR style spline sway bar. So you can quickly pop them out, swap them, run a stiffer, lower rate. And then the arms go down, connect to the lower control arms. So it kind of deletes the whole complicated OEM sway bar that kind of snakes its way through the subframe that you can't really adjust. So that was one of the big projects in the front was making that work. Um, and then after that, it was trying to fix the geometry as much as we could. So I worked with Home Developments pretty closely because they built a similar car in Australia. So we got custom super duper extended front ball joints to kind of correct the roll centers. So they have extended ball joints and we went even more aggressive on that. Um, so we did the same in the rear as well. We have a roll center bracket that's even longer. So we have a few custom parts just to kind of correct it because the car it's running significantly lower. Um, if you compare the chassis height to the EG, it's actually like 20 mil lower than the EG, which is kind of crazy when you think about it. We have a almost a 25 inch tall tire compared to a 23 inch tall tire on the hatch. So you're getting about an inch in ride height just on the tire alone, and then it runs even lower. So obviously everything gets wacky. In order to clear the tie rods at like max angle, I had to notch the frame. And then to limit the amount of steering lock, we, we basically, um, the guys at Hybrid kind of 3 printed me steering rack stoppers. So there was a ton of work just to get the front to work, um, especially with steering angle. Like the fenders had to be raised and radius just to be able to turn. And the big change this year with Gridlock Touring Cup is we went from having a selection of Hoosiers, slicks, semi-slick street tires, to now it's strictly street tires. So that's the biggest change to me. So I have a, a 245 up front and a 205 in the back at the moment because we are allowed a, a stagger rule for front wheel drive cars. I didn't expect them to be as grippy as they are, but you can match your braking zones with 200 tread wars as you can with 40 tread or Hoosiers. Like the Falcons were absolutely phenomenal at Mid-Ohio. But yeah, this year it was so hectic with this car that I, I couldn't even think about fixing another car. But I think once things kind of settle down, I'll, I'll kind of dig back into the hatch and see what I can do. I got to the point where, you know, you kind of feel invincible in a car. Um, I've been doing this for so long that um, I'd never been in a scenario where I could have even expected that to happen. And the crazy thing is, the event before, I pretty much boiled my brakes and, and lost brakes at Gingerman. And I almost wrecked the car there. 
And I think that was probably the event where I ran out of luck. And yeah, I paid for it in the next event. So I spent a lot of time and money on this car. Um, it's my passion project, it's my dream build, and I want this car to live a very long life. I want to enjoy it more than just racing, which is why it's street legal. I got blinkers, everything, historic plates on it. I do plan on driving this, uh, cruising, doing the long road trips. <laughs> no, it is not street legal, not street legal at all. <laughs> Yeah, I, I put blood, sweat, and tears into this, and I, I want to enjoy this car for a long time. And uh, I kind of think twice about making certain moves. Um, I guess um, when you build race cars, um, you kind of have to go into it expecting that is an outcome. And it's a risk you have to take, and it's why I went overboard on safety in this car. I'm kind of realizing is way more important now, and my health, obviously, really important. So I want to make sure that I'm safe and, yeah make sure the car's safe. Thanks for watching guys. If you like this video, smash that like button. We put out a new video every week and sometimes even two. So don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more awesome content.